We all saw it happen. Jin Wu started as just another E-rank hunter, weak, expendable, practically monster baked. And then he got beaten out of existence. Or at least, he should have. But here's the twist. He didn't just survive, he evolved. Or more accurately, he transcended. So here's the real question. Is Jin Wu still human? Or did something fundamentally change in his biology the moment he became the Shadow Monarch? Let's break it down with science, madness, and a little bit of necromantic nightmare fuel. Let's rewind to that moment in the double dungeon. Chapter 10. Jin Wu gets brutally wrecked. His legs severed, his teammates are abandoning him, and death is knocking hard. But instead of dying, he's offered a contract by something. A system no one else can see. Now, hold up. That's already our first red flag. Systems aren't magic in this world. They're biological. Think of it like a hyper-advanced parasite AI, not just uploading itself into Jin Wu's consciousness, but rewriting his body from the cellular level. Imagine a human installing a firmware update that turns them into a god. And the first real evidence of his transformation? His insane healing. By chapter 14, Jin Wu's wounds are healing at a speed impossible for a normal human. We're talking Wolverine levels of regeneration, except it's even cleaner. No scars, no exhaustion, just rapid cellular regeneration that looks manufactured. And in real world science, the only thing that heals like that is stem cell regeneration. But stem cells don't just heal, they replace. It's like Jin Wu's body is being constantly rewritten from a master blueprint. Now let's jump to chapter 126, the moment fans call the Ascension, Jin Wu's fighting the Frost Monarch. He gets skewered clean through the chest, that should have been it. Game over. But instead, he gets back up, not healed, resurrected. As in, his original body dies and a new one is formed from pure shadow energy. So what's happening here biologically? We have two options resurrection or replication. Either Jin Wu's soul jumped to a new vessel or the Shadow Monarch remade his body from memory, like 3D printing a human using dark matter. Let's bring in real world biology. Some jellyfish, like Turritopsis doyonii, are biologically immortal. When damaged, they revert to their younger form and rebuild from scratch. That's regeneration through memory, cells storing blueprints of their peak form. Now imagine that, but controlled by an ancient death god, AI living in your spinal cord. By this point, his biology is not human anymore. It's adaptive, regenerative, possibly quantum. When he's hurt, the system doesn't just heal, it rebuilds him. He doesn't sleep, he doesn't eat, and he can summon armies from his shadow. Let's talk about those shadows for a second. Every shadow soldier is made from the corpse of a monster or human Jin Wu's killed, but they aren't just puppets. They retain memories, combat styles, even personalities. That means the shadow energy can store neural patterns, like backup drives of consciousness. You realize what that means, right? Jin Wu's shadows are biological USBs. They're proof that whatever this shadow energy is, it's capable of recreating consciousness. That's not magic, that's computational biology on a god-tier level. And this brings us to the spine. Every transformation, every control command, it all comes from the spinal column. Whenever Jin Wu extracts or inserts a shadow, it's through the nape. When other monarchs speak to him, it's in his nervous system. Why the spine? Because the spine isn't just your support column. It's the data highway between your brain and body. If something wanted to hijack your entire system, from movement to thought, that's where it would plug in. So imagine the Shadow Monarch as a parasite, one that latches onto your spine, injects its code, and slowly converts your body into its ideal host. Not instantly, slowly, over time. The human dies, the Monarch emerges. And this isn't just a theory, the series shows us other shifters, like the Ice Elf or the Beast Monarch. All of them exhibit similar traits, healing, strength, immunity to aging. They don't sleep, they don't eat, they barely even breathe. That's not evolution, that's replacement. Even Jin Wu's body temperature changes, 
Remember, when Cha Hai In says he smells different than other hunters, that's not just poetic. Humans give off pheromones, biochemical signals. Jin Wu's scent literally changed, meaning his sweat, oils, and biochemistry aren't human anymore. His transformation is so deep, it bypasses biology entirely and dives into ontological change, what he is at a fundamental level. Still not convinced? Okay, let's break the final wall. In chapter 144, Jin Wu exists in a plane of time-stopped reality, fighting the monarch of destruction across thousands of years, mentally, physically, spiritually. He doesn't age, he doesn't tire, because time doesn't even apply to him anymore. That's not a human experience. That's a multi-dimensional entity playing God in a sandbox. So let's summarize what we've got so far. Jin Wu's cells regenerate beyond human limits. His nervous system is hijacked by a parasite level system. His consciousness operates outside space-time post-transformation. His body was entirely rebuilt from death, possibly multiple times. He commands shadows with preserved consciousness like biological drones. At this point, the question isn't, is Jin Wu human? The real question is, when did he stop being one? And this brings us to the most unsettling realization yet. If the shadow monarch can rewrite biology, is there even a limit to what Jin Wu can become? Because if he's no longer bound by human limits, no aging, no entropy, no physical law, then what is he? Let's dive into the terrifying answer. Let's talk entropy first. Every biological organism breaks down. That's the rule. Cells age, DNA degrades, even stars eventually die, but not Jin Wu. After becoming the shadow monarch, Jin Wu is immune to entropy. In chapter 177, when he resets time and reappears in the hospital, his body is pristine, no wear and tear, not even a scratch from the decades-long battle he just endured in frozen time. That means he's operating on non-thermal biology. In theoretical physics, that would make him a closed system. He generates no heat loss, no decay, no degradation. That's not human. That's post-organic. And that brings us to quantum death. There's a concept in quantum biology called quantum immortality. It's the idea that if infinite timelines exist, consciousness always continues in the version where you survive. Jin Wu literally experiences this in the final arcs, surviving apocalyptic battles, rewinding timelines, retaining memories from versions of himself that should have died. It's not metaphor, it's quantum persistence. Jin Wu isn't anchored to a single timeline anymore. His existence spans multiple states of being. He remembers what no one else can. And that's a dead giveaway that his consciousness is no longer biological. It's data, persistent, non-linear. Now, let's talk scale. In chapter 168, we watch Jin Wu's solo armies of monarchs, dragons, and primordial beings. But he's not just using strength, he's using precision, strategy, memory. His brain isn't processing like a human anymore. It's like a quantum processor, handling terabytes of battle data in seconds. Real-world comparison, cephalopods, like octopuses, can rewrite their RNA in real time. That means their cells adapt their instructions based on environment, not DNA. Now imagine Jin Wu doing that, but on a monarch level, dynamically altering muscle density, visual acuity, reflex arcs, and shadow responses mid-combat. That's not mutation. That's live editing his own operating system. Even more insane, the way he moves through space. When Jin Wu uses shadow exchange to teleport across the globe, He's not just vanishing, he's manipulating position through a pseudo-quantum fold. In chapter 149, he swaps places with Baru instantaneously across kilometers. That's not even teleportation, that's tunneling. In quantum physics, particles can appear across barriers without crossing them, called quantum tunneling. Jin Wu does this with his entire body, and if you think that's the peak, you're not ready for the final evolution. In the last chapters, after he defeats Antares, Jin Wu is not just a shadow monarch. He's the new foundation for reality. The system shuts down. The other monarchs disappear. The balance of life and death? 
it runs through him. That's when it hits. Jinwu is no longer part of the ecosystem. He is the ecosystem. His body isn't the vessel anymore. His will is. He reshapes reality, brings people back from death, controls time, rewrites memory, and remains lucid, grounded, emotional. And that's the most terrifying part. He still feels like Jin Wu. He still loves his family, still protects humanity, but biologically, spiritually, celestially, he's not one of us anymore. He's a god in human skin, choosing not to forget where he came from. So if you've ever wondered what happens when the human soul gets an upgrade, this is it. Shadow monarch Jin Wu isn't just powerful, he's proof that evolution has no ceiling in fiction. Still curious? Check out my video on the excruciating pain Denji feels when transforming into Chainsaw Man, or the terrifying biology of Titans in Attack on Titan. Other than that, take care, stay sharp, and stay curious.